$70 for a complete personal computer sounds like an interesting proposition and that's exactly what the Raspberry Pi 400 promises to offer. On the surface, this new variant of the Raspberry Pi appears to be nothing more than a Pi 4 shoved into a Pi keyboard. But is that really all it is? Let's find out. Here we have the Raspberry Pi 400 as a standalone unit which costs $70. For an additional $30, you can purchase the device as a kit which comes with everything required to get you up and running straight out of the box. The latter includes a power supply, a mouse, a 16GB microSD card preloaded with Raspberry Pi OS, a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, as well as the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. Certainly worth considering if this is your first Raspberry Pi. In typical Raspberry Pi fashion, it's quite a bare bones unboxing experience. The device itself though feels very solid, and you'd be forgiven for mistaking this for a Pi keyboard, as they really do look pretty much identical, especially from the front. But the F10 scroll lock key has been replaced by a power button, and the same applies for the indicator. Some other giveaways are the larger rubber pads and the vents at the bottom of the Pi 400. And of course, the ports that we have at our disposal. Overall, the keyboard feels decent to use. It's got a fairly shallow key travel and despite the compact form factor, it doesn't feel cramped at all when typing. And just as a reference, here's a quick size comparison next to a Pi 4. In terms of ports, we've got a 40 pin GPIO header, a micro SD card slot, two micro HDMI ports, which support up to 4K at 60 frames per second, USB-C power input, two USB 3 ports, a single USB 2.0 port, which is one less than on the Pi 4, gigabit ethernet, and finally, a Kensington slot. But what's truly interesting about the Pi 400 is what lies underneath its skin. So let's pry this thing open. The keyboard is connected via a flexible flat cable, so let's remove it from the socket before we carry on. Immediately, the first thing that strikes us is how massive the heatsink is. This should significantly improve the thermal performance of the device, in theory, but we'll run some tests later on to find out if that's the case. In addition to being screwed to the body, the heatsink is stuck to the CPU with thermal conductive tape. It's clear from here that this is not simply a Raspberry Pi 4 hiding inside a Pi keyboard. That said, Specs-wise, it is still somewhat similar to a Pi 4 Model B. There's built-in dual-band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, 4GB of LPDDR4 3200 RAM, and a Broadcom BCM2711 quad-core Cortex A72 CPU. However, this is actually an upgraded version of the chip found in the Pi 4 Model B and is clocked at 1.8GHz instead of just 1.5. This is not too surprising though, considering how large the heatsink is. Aside from that, we obviously have a new keyboard connector. It actually traces back to the USB controller, which explains where that missing USB port from the Pi 4 went. And speaking of the Pi 4, here's how the boards differ from each other. All right, let's put it back together. In the meantime, please leave a like if you're enjoying this video and do subscribe as we have an in-depth comparison video of the Pi 4 and Pi 400 coming up soon.
let's plug it in and fire it up. In terms of general use, the performance mostly just feels like that of a 4GB variant of the Pi 4. What this means is that it provides a very smooth user experience when it comes to tasks such as editing documents and surfing the web. Video playback isn't too bad either, although it does start to struggle for anything over 1080p. But other than that, we can totally see this being an adequately good desktop experience for a lot of people. Finally, we stress tested the device using Stressberry and we were really impressed with the results. The temperature peaked at around 49 degrees Celsius after running it at a clock speed of 1.8 GHz for 10 minutes. We've never seen anything close to these numbers from a Pi 4 without any sort of active cooling solution. Anyway, that's all for this video. But there's so much more to say about the Pi 400. Once again, make sure that you're subscribed as we have a head-to-head -head video going into more detail on how it stacks up against the Pi 4 coming on the channel soon. Until then, stay safe and thanks for watching.